Welcome to the 128 Bit Studios YouTube channel. I know what you're thinking. You weren't called that before. You were called the Web Dev YouTube channel, and you would be correct in thinking that. In fact, if you go to one of my two videos that I have on from eight months ago and 11 months ago, you will see that that is the case. <laughs> but just to explain, uh, I've had a 128 Bit Studios company name for a while now, and I wanted to call the YouTube channel the same thing so they all link together. If anybody needs to find me, it's very, very easy to find me on Google with one name rather than two. So that's the reason for that. Apologies if you got used to the old name, but this is the new name. So um, yeah, it is what it is. Um, just wanted to say thank you to the feedback from the last two videos. I've got a pretty good uh, amount of feedback. A lot of people like the videos, didn't get any negative comments, which is always good. Um, a lot of people asked me to make another video on the same series. But I didn't really know what to do with the next series. I thought I took it as long as I, I thought I took it as far as I could. So I decided not to do that. Um, but today we're going to be talking about something very special, as you can probably see from the YouTube title uh, and the thumbnail that I will make in the future, which I, I currently haven't made. Um, so without further ado, let's get right into the terminals. So let's get started with creating a Kubernetes cluster, shall we? Now, go to DigitalOcean, log into your account. Uh, on the left hand side, you'll see Kubernetes. You can click that. And at the top right hand side, there's a green button that says create. Click that and then click clusters. Now, when we create clusters, you want to select the region that's closest to you. Mine is London. VPC network we can leave for now and our cluster capacity now you may notice in digital ocean you can only have a minimum number of two nodes and the reason for this as you can see on the screen recommended a number of two nodes is required to prevent downtime during upgrades or maintenance the idea behind this is that you have two nodes and you want to upgrade one of them one of the nodes will stay intact completely how it is and the load balancer will then direct all traffic to that node. On the second node, the upgrades happen. So while these upgrades are happening, it's not stable. It can't be used. Uh, some pods are down, some pods are up. Um, it's in maintenance mode, but it still allows visitors to get on your site by using node number one. When node number two is ready, the, DN the DNS on the load balancer will switch traffic to node number two. While the, as, as this happens, node number one will then get the upgrade. And now both nodes are upgraded and no traffic has been lost. Your visitors can still use your site uh, just like they would have before. It's very, very cool. Two nodes uh, and now we've got a different pool name. So that's good, create cluster. Okay, so while that's being done in the background, you'll see here that you've got step one, two, three, four. We're gonna click get started to go to step two. And here it's going to tell us to install all everything that we need to install in order to uh, play around with Kubernetes. So there's four things I recommend that you install. The first one is the Kubernetes standard client. The second is uh, something called Kube Context, which is Kube CTX. The third is Kubens, Kube ENS. It's also important to note that the Kubens package is completely optional. You don't actually need it. It just makes things a little bit quicker later on, which uh, goes alongside kubectx. And the fourth thing is a digital ocean command line tool. You're going to need the digital ocean command line tool um, for a lot of things. The thing we're going to need it for in this tutorial is to uh, download the cluster information into our local config file in our terminal so that we can access that cluster from the local terminal. So I've opened up a new tab here. I'll put all these links in the description. Uh, first, we're going to install the DigitalOcean uh, toolset. So we come over to our terminal. Imagine I'm doing this for the first time. Brew install DOCTL. Okay, so that's now installed. Uh, we can leave it at that for now and we'll go ahead and install the other three required uh, things that we need. So the next thing we need is kubectl. This is the main bulk of Kubernetes. 
So I'll put this link in the description. If you look at the headers, select the operating system that um, applies to you. Mine is Mac OS X. So we do actually have a brew package that we can use. Um, I've already installed it. So I, this will give an error of some kind. Yep, there we go. That's already installed. Uh, that's all you need to do for that. So if we scroll down to installation, Mac OS. We can do brew install kubectx. I've already got it installed, so you'll get errors. You may notice that the video skips in a little while, and that's because I tried to install Cube NS, um, and it didn't work. And I'm not sure why, but luckily it's optional. I've never used it before uh, while working with Kubernetes, so I just thought it'd be a nice little addition, but I couldn't get it working today. So that's why there's a bit of a video skip. Um, so now that's both of them installed. So now if we type in kubectx, we should get some stuff. Um, most of the stuff you can't see because it's work related, unfortunately. Um, but you'll be able to see some of the bottom ones here. So I've got three um, here that you'll be able to see. That's an old cluster that I was working on before. That's a very, very old cluster that no longer exists. So now we've got the Docker uh, when I was messing around with Minikube once. Um, and all the ones above are work related. So. So we managed to install the four tools that we initially set out to do, um, except one of them was optional, which was the cube ENS, which we couldn't get to work. So the first one was uh, DOCTL, Digital Ocean Command Line Tools. The second one was cube CTL. And the third one was cube CTX and cube ENS, we just couldn't get working. Let's just go ahead and close these windows so that we can carry on. So. Now we need what we need to do now is we now need to authorize the Digital Ocean um, command line tools with the account that we have using a generation token. So if we type in do ctl, sorry, Digital Ocean tl, we see this bunch of commands that we can type in. Uh, we need to run the auth command. So doctl auth. And here you'll see there's another command within that called init. So if we type in doctl auth init. Okay. So even though I uninstalled it and reinstalled it, it's still picking up on an old token that I've used before. Um, but what you'll probably see is something the lines of you need to log into DigitalOcean and you need to get a token and paste it here. So if you go back to DigitalOcean, um, scroll down to API and you'll see applications and API. And we've got our tokens and keys. This is one I created earlier. I'm just gonna go ahead and delete that one. Actually, no, that's the one I'm using. I'm not gonna delete that one. Um, and click generate new token. Here, you give it a name. So I'm gonna call mine uh, Z by X, backwards X, Y, Z, generate token. And you'll see here that it shows, this will only show at the time you're on the page. As soon as you refresh the page, it'll be gone. So make sure you copy that to your clipboard if I refresh the page here, you'll see it'll go. Now it's gone, and you can never read that again. You have to uh, generate a new token if you need it again. So, and then come back to your terminal, and where it says, please enter your token, just paste it into there and press enter. And then hopefully it'll just all work and it'll all connect and you'll be able to do stuff. Um, so the next command we need to type in to make sure that our DOCTL is, is all for us successfully is, Um, so if you type in DOCTL, Kubernetes, Cluster, kubeconfig, uh, and then type in show. Hmm, apparently we're missing a command. Okay, so we need to get the, the, the ID of the cluster. So if we go back to Kubernetes on the left-hand side in DigitalOcean, You'll see our clusters here. This one should have started up now, which is good. Um, and then if you didn't rename the name of the cluster, then this will be your cluster name up here. So just copy that to your clipboard, go back to your terminal and type in DOCTL Kubernetes cluster kubeconfig show and then paste in the name of the cluster ID and then it will bring you some stuff. So this is this proves that DOCTL is working and it's authorized 
and we can retrieve the certificate from that cluster. We don't need to do anything from that. We just need to we just use that to show that it's working. So if I clear my terminal, the next command you need to type in is doctl kubernetes cluster kubeconfig save and then that same sorry let's try that again so cube cluster and then instead of writing show put save let's copy this cluster again and if you note here if it's done it successfully you'll see adding cluster credentials to cube config file found in brad.cube slash config and to prove that it's been added do cat space the name of the uh, config file and then do a pipe space grep and then paste in the name of the cluster and then you'll see that you have all this information here this basically means that it's working and everything's added to your cube config so now if you go ahead and go kubectx you should see your new cluster which is this one above the second one was the one I had before and the first one is the new one so kubectx is really good because it allows you to switch between clusters based on different projects so say you're using kubernetes here you might use one for work you might use one on a side project and you can manage all of them in here um, uh, with aws it's a slightly different command i think it's aws eks update config and then you give it the name of the um uh, the cluster name like we did before and it'll add it to your cube context with digital ocean it's the doctl kubernetes uh fill in the blanks here so um, what we want to do is want to copy the name of this cluster and type qctx space name of the cluster and it's as easy as that now we're on our new cluster now the next thing we need to do is make sure that our pools and our pods are running so if we go to droplets uh, sorry if we go to kubernetes go to clusters and at the top we have nodes and if you click nodes we've got two pools Within each of those pods, uh, pools, we have pods, and we have loads of other stuff. We have uh, ingresses. Um, uh, we have we have a lot of Kubernetes stuff. So DigitalOcean is really nice because we have this button up here, called Kubernetes dashboard. Now, if we click this, we get a really nice user interface. So we don't have to type in any commands anymore. Well, we will have to type in commands, but it's just nice to you know when you're getting familiar with this, just to have a look around. The, uh, the Kubernetes uh, dashboard, which is really nice. So on the left hand side, we've got cron jobs, daemon sets, deployments, jobs, pods, replica sets, replication controllers, stateful sets. And then the more important things down here, which you'll use a lot, and believe me, you'll use them a lot, ingresses, services, config maps, and secrets. The five things that I've worked with mainly um, while I've been learning this stuff is pods, ingresses services config maps and secrets um I, I and deployment sorry as well so six things um those are the main things that i've been working with uh, over the last few months so they're the things i'm going to try and explain in this video in this video series so if we click pods each of these pods will be each of your applications so remember at the beginning uh, a few minutes ago i said you might have a client facing website and you might have an API and then another API and then maybe like a RabbitMQ um, queue instance. So you might have four different pods, but you only want one of them to access the world and you want the other three to hide behind the firewall or whatever you need to do. Well, that's what we're gonna try and look at next. So I understand it's, it, I, I may have gone too fast, but that's the beauty of YouTube. You can pause, rewind, go back through the video um, and have a look over some stuff um, maybe if I skipped over some things too fast you can go back and look um, also if, if some things aren't working cause it, this is this is like the next level up from my last series so there might be some things that your specific um, uh, laptop might not be able to it, it may not work it may break so type in the comments and I'll try and help the best I can uh, in the meantime I'm going to start recording video number two and then we can we can go forward from there and we can start doing some stuff with the pods. So thank you for watching the video. Um, I hope you learned a lot. I hope you will learn a lot in the future videos. Uh, remember to subscribe to my YouTube channel if you want to see more and give me a thumbs up. Uh, I do love the thumbs up and I'll catch you next time. So thanks for watching.